Hello, my fellow classmates of Anthropology 307. Uh, this is Zachary. And uh, I figured I wanted to do more of a uh, video audio response rather than a typed out written one because I express my thoughts better when I could speak what's on my mind. And I've, I have honestly just finished watching the film that I decided to do. So the, I, my ideas are fresh in my head, so I'd like to be able to get them out while I have them. Um, for starters, though, I want to do... I just want to say I hope everybody's doing all right. I hope everybody's safe and healthy you know i do miss coming to class every week and discussing these topics with everybody and you know having that in-person setting where we can all bounce ideas off of each other and really critically think and challenge ourselves in ways that we haven't been able to challenge ourselves before this is what i've been craving for and now that it's kind of taken away and we're doing online it's kind of not my cup of tea but i think we're all going a little stir crazy so hope everybody's doing well um in regards to what i'm going to be talking about um i'm going to be talking about the film that i've watched which was the ape who went to college story of chantek who was taught sign language at the university of tennessee in the 1970s and i'm kind of going to answer along the lines of uh question or prompt d but i'm going to kind of go off on my own little thought process about movie but if to read D, it's talking about the social dimensions of a scientific research and discovery. Specifically, how did researchers' personalities, personal, professional goals, personal lives, relationships with both other humans and the animals they're working with influence their research approach and interpretations? Um, when I'm watching this movie about Chantek, it was a emotional roller coaster for me. Um, it's kind of like watching an actual movie about a, like telling a story rather than watching a documentary. Like, I was able to follow this story as if it was something much more than just a documentary about a monkey. Or a chimp. Sorry, it doesn't have a tail. Um, but, you know, at the start, it's talking about this, this orangutan, Chantek, who was taken in by Lynn and this other researcher, and was raised like a human. Like, raised as if it was a human child rather than a chimpanzee. And throughout this, it's being taught language. It's being taught how to, or Chantek, he is being taught how to sign, being taught how to communicate, being taught currency. It's, and not only that, but he's understanding these things and perceiving these things, you know, how to exchange money for things you want, how to be able to express what you want through your signs. He, at seven months, is doing things that a toddler at seven months, a human at seven months, isn't doing yet. Like, we have very limited communication when at seven months. We can barely walk. Chantek is swinging around and jumping from place to place and getting around this campus. And the best part is, he's being accepted in the campus culture, the campus community. The key word there, culture. He's not looked at as, look at, look at that friggin' hairy creature. No, he's just, just another student. He's going to classes. He's doing things that any other college student would do. Heck, he's sitting on campus with a can of Coke, you know? Like, just any other person. And eventually, there's the debate of if primal instincts kicked in as he got older. When he, uh, was, when he attacked that female student... At, on the stairwell of the campus. Um, there's obviously that argument about primal instincts and was it just, did it just become, you know, forget everything I've been taught, this is what I do. Um, I don't believe that. I think it just was something that happened. Um, but when it comes down to now, he's in this facility, and what's even crazier is that they can... What I took away from this, the biggest takeaway I took from the movie was when he's in the facility, Lynn goes to visit him, and he expresses that he is hurt. It's his feelings that are hurt. And that he is, and through what she had explained is that he was going through depression. He was suffering from severe depression. It was getting worse and worse and worse as the days went on. To me, that was something that wasn't out of the ordinary. Like, I believe that this could be, that this was real, but... It was crazy to think that something that us humans, that many of us deal with on a regular basis and struggle with, and some have even, you know, lost their lives to it, happened to this orangutan. 
I mean, and you know what? Sometimes, and if you want to look at it, like when it comes to communication and feelings of knowing something's not right. Take my dog for example, because because this can go outside of chimps who are closely related to us. This can go to pets. If I could indulge in a moment. Yay, yeah, bud. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. Say hi to my class. Oh, and she's so cute. He says sweet little accent, but do, 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 do. but based on that, um, he's very much like Doug from Up. If you've ever seen the Pixar movie Up, his attention span is here, there, and everywhere. He's not the brightest bulb on the tree. However, he does have his own ways of communicating, his own signs, if you will. When he wants something, when he needs to go outside, or he's, he does this thing with his paw. He will rub his paw across either your arm or your leg or something until he gets his desired result. Um, you know, if you stop petting him, he's got this little nudge he does, like, hey, why did you stop petting me? Why did you stop giving me the attention? And that's the same thing with somebody like Chantic. Chantic had his own signs and his own perceptions of things. And again, that whole idea of knowing that something's wrong and being upset and showing that you can tell. But there was a two week period not that long ago where my stepmother was not around. She was helping her mom with some stuff. And um, you could tell by Jaeger's body language and the way he was carrying himself around the house that he could tell something was right, that his mom wasn't around and there was something not right, that it was just myself and my dad. Chantic is the exact same way. He could realize something wasn't right. And when Lynn was there, he expressed that in his signs. And then ultimately it gets to the point where, you know, Lynn gets him out of there, brings him to the zoo in Atlanta. And the one other big takeaway, besides the depression thing, that I really got out of this was the ability to retain knowledge, retain taught knowledge. Because Lynn would regularly visit to get the zoo. And despite chant that, whether in the facility or in the zoo, none of the caretakers are signing with Chantic. Chantic is just being an orangutan. In the zoo, he's living with other orangutans. Nobody is signing to him. Nobody is giving him desired results based on what he's doing with his hand motions, right? Lynn goes there, and he is still signing to her. He has remembered all the things he was taught 10, 15, 20 years after the fact of no longer being on that campus. To me, that is the biggest thing. Because ultimately, what, what separates us from chimps, apes, is just one little genetic difference. A little genetic difference. I'm not saying it's only one, but I'm just saying like, there's just a few small genetic differences. And that's what allows our minds to go where we have been able to go and why their minds have been where they are. And you know, but it's crazy to think that throughout all of these trials and tribulations that he's still been able to retain this. And you know, maybe it's gotten a little sloppy because he hasn't been exposed to it, but he can still express what he wants, whether it be ice cream, a cookie doing small signs to say that he wants meat and he's trying to whisper to her. Well, it's just crazy. And it goes to show that it's important to really look into and talk about not just our culture, to not our culture, but animal culture. Because it's not possible to say that other species do not have culture. You can't say that. You can't. Especially now, I, I can't say that now after being exposed to everything that I have learned. And that's not to say that I never believed other animals have culture, but it's unrefutable now in my mind that other species do have culture that, because look it, every species has their own way of communicating with one another. They have their own way of learning. They have their own way of surviving. Like, there are plenty of species on this earth that have been around longer than we have. And after we are gone, there will be plenty of species that will still be here after us. And there's a reason for that. And it's important for us to look and research and really study these other 
species, other creatures. So that way we can better ourselves while also bettering the environment around us and understanding. Because if we can't understand them, why, how can we understand what we need? Because if we can't understand what's making them so great, how can we expect to be great? For us to hold ourselves at such a higher pedestal than, than other creatures is so in the past now. We need to look at every single species as if they are their own civilized culture. Whether it be us, whether it be chips, whether it be orangutans, whether it be our pets. We have to start thinking critically and we really need to start understanding these things because for us to be better, we need to understand how everything else is better. So that way, not only we are better by the end of it, but everything is better now. And I guess that's where I'm going to leave it. This has gone a little longer than I thought, but hey, what's well, about 10 minutes compared to a two-hour lecture, right? But thank you all for listening, and I hope, again, you're all doing well, and I hope to be able to talk to you guys, and I can't wait to read some of your responses. And that's about it. See you guys later.